Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 65. Tech Talk number 65. It just keeps piling up. (laughs) We'd love to have your questions. You can throw them in the chat room in Facebook. You can throw them in the chat room in YouTube. You can also Mm -hmm. email them to us if you have a question that something comes up to you in the middle of the week. And uh, you can write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. But we love your questions. But we got lots to talk about tonight. Where do you find all this stuff? It just <laughs> piles up along I with have all my the- sources. Yes, yes, you do. I don't want to reveal all my sources and people won't watch my segment. Good point. We got Jersey's tech update. <laughs> we're going to talk about acoustics and we're going to answer your questions all tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whitten. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Yes, we're here to talk about tech. Is it really tech, though? I mean, the stuff that you talk about is really techy, but, you know, having a home voiceover studio or personal professional voiceover studio. I like that. We, yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, then I'd have to change my website name and stuff, but. I shorten it to personal professional Professional studio. studio. Yeah. Okay. That works. So many of you are podcasters now. Yeah. Everybody's a podcaster. Yeah. Well, you know what it is. Everybody can do a podcast. Doesn't mean everybody should. That's right. That's right. Um, Anyway. But we can help you no matter what. No matter what. Our job is to make sure that you sound like you, not like you in a bathroom or like you in a stadium, in a stadium or in the hall of mirrors in in Versailles (laughs) or something like that. And we'll talk about acoustics a little bit later on in the show, but our job is to make sure that you sound that actually, I guess the best way to describe it is that you don't have to worry about your sound. And the only thing you have to worry about is being a good voice actor, right? The performance, right? You know, you know, all you want to be able to do is hit record. That's what George and I do. We, get you set up. So that's all you got to do is hit record and you learn how to do editing and some of the other stuff. But if you do it right up front, it saves you a lot of time and effort on the back end. Yeah. Would you rather be better at voice acting or editing? <laughs> I mean, what, what is it? What's the part of your career you're really focusing on? Right. You know, we want to make sure that all that stuff falls out of the way so you can focus on be an the actual job. Absolutely. And if you would like to work with Mr. Whittem, who can teach you how to do this or maintain your studio and get you up and running, where would they go? Well, you head over to George the dot tech. My name, it's my address. I stole that from Robin Satham Walnut in Philadelphia. 
the diamond commercial back in. Um, but anyway, that's where you find me and you can hire me on demand. Actually, I've also got a team of others that can be made available if I'm not available, including this guy. Yeah, you might actually work with Dan too. <laughs> um, so that's uh, all available through georgethe.tech. You can do on-demand support or you can do uh, offline support where I, you send me audio and I send back notes or settings or presets or what have you. But Dan also does a lot of similar things in his home on the web, and that's homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, check that out. Uh, I think it's time to update the website a little bit. If you're just starting, if you've got all your equipment, if you're about to do your demo and you've got to do it remotely and you want to make sure mm. that you're sounding your best. That's happening a lot now. Right? Absolutely. So come to me. I will make sure that it's sounding good. Um, I can teach you from, you know, from soup to nuts, whatever that means, how to get it done properly. From the beginning mm. of the meal to the end. I guess Alpha they used to eat Omega. nuts after yeah. the meal. Maybe Was that a thing? It might have been. <laughs> the only thing they had to eat anyway. Uh, but go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. If you scroll to the very bottom of the page, you will come across my specimen collection cup. And that is a Dropbox. Click on that. Follow the instructions. Issue me some raw audio. And let me hear what it sounds like in your raw, natural state, voice-wise. And uh, I will give you a very thorough analysis of what's going on in your studio, what you need to improve, or if we need to have a much more you know, long conversation <laughs> on, on, on what you're doing. And you intensive. Know, yeah. Sometimes I, I, I like to hear how people are processing their audio so I can go, no. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's not how you do that. Yeah. Anyway. So check us out. I mean, you're here. You listen to us every week anyway while we're doing this. But if you'd like to work with us personally, we are more than happy to do that. So go on over to our websites and get in contact with all righty what is up in george's tech toy update this week <laughs> tech toy you know, we end up with a lot of toys to talk about <laughs> well i just came back from a few days of camping i was van lifing it in my subaru forester Ooh. which is not not highly recommended i can't even sit up in the back not quite very big enough. but i needed a way to make sure that i was i knew i was going to be you know not what do you call it when you're camping Primitive camping, primitive. There was no power at the campsites, mm -hmm. so um, I needed a way to make sure I was always topped up, and I didn't want to have to start my car and charge the battery right, all the time. Right. I needed a power station, and I think we talked a little bit about this a couple of weeks ago because we were talking about what to do with power outages right. and brownouts. And this time of year, right now, we're actually having our Santa Ana winds, which I think is probably the biggest thing that knocks out power in LA is knocking down trees. Well, we didn't have those thunderstorms last week. Oh, that was, oh, that was exciting. Intense. Yeah. That was setting off car alarms in my neighborhood. <laughs> that was exciting. Anyway, so I, I, I started doing a little research and I stumbled on one that was head and shoulders, apparently above many. And that is this guy right here. This is the EcoFlow River. Wow. The, the, this is the base model. They make some much, much larger ones if you want to run like more of a house for a while. But this is something that has a lot of uses. Now, so clearly it's designed. The idea behind this is something that's for portable use. I'm like right now, I'm running my, charging my phone. It's not plugged in, but I could be if I had a plug If in. you were. <laughs> and then I've got my MacBook Air actually charging directly off the front of it. You don't need a power adapter. You can plug in. There's a 100-watt output. So that's a lot of power. That'll charge MacBook Pros, anything, right off USB-C. I don't know any other units out there that can do that. That's, That's pretty impressive. awesome. The reason why, so you're probably thinking, well, well, I've got my little charger. Why don't I just use that? And the thing is, anytime you have a transformer, even a small one like this, that you waste some electricity. Some of it is lost in heat and whatever. When you're charging the device right off of this port, it's more efficient. So the battery lasts longer. So that's pretty awesome. Then you've got 12 volt outputs for different lights if you happen to have the right plugs. It's got the standard 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. It has a light, which may seem silly, but actually I found it really helpful when I was in my car. And if you do need to use this in your home, that light could be the only one that's handy. Uh, so that's really cool that it's there. It has more on this end this is the well you didn't show me that before. this is the charging input side so this is where you plug in 110 your household 
And this is where you plug in your car, 12 volt, or a solar panel. Hmm. So it'll charge from either one. Wow. And what makes this different from most is this can charge from completely dead to totally full in an hour and a half off of your power plug at home. Wow. It's really fast. Most of them are like eight hours. So let's say you are traveling and you really need to have this ready. You could go have dinner somewhere, plug this in, and when you come back, it's pretty much ready to go. So that's pretty cool. And then this side is the 110 side, which it has three outlets to plug stuff into. Most of them don't. There's also buttons to turn on each section. So this, this button here turns on just the inverter. The inverter is what allows you to get 110 volts out of, out of 12 or 48 or whatever the voltage of this battery. And that's another very special thing about this unit. The inverter is very powerful. It can put out 600 watts continuously, which would be enough to power anybody's recording studio, unless you have like a scooter 24 inch reel to reel. But it can do all that, or it can run up to, I think it's like 15 or 1800 watts for short bursts of time. Hmm. So believe it or not, you could actually run a hair dryer on this for short little. It's, it's pretty it's, insane. It's, yeah, it's bringing something along to dry your hair it's yeah. a little extreme. Okay, but here's the bonus. <laughs> but there's more. But wait. I, I wanted to make sure, so I checked this out and I found out this can also act as an online UPS unit. And what that means is you could leave this plugged in underneath your desk at home into the wall. Battery bag. And plug all of your gear like a UPS into this. And this is always, this is always running your equipment through the inverter. So it's always stabilizing the power. It's always perfect, clean power, no matter what. And then that's keeping charged off of your wall outlet. What does something like this run? It's not super cheap. It was about 300, maybe a little more. I got it on a deal at an REI garage sale deal. They, these are the things you can get at REI, but online. I was just really impressed with the feature set and it worked beautifully. So that's something that if you want to have piece that you can leave at home under your desk always always ready to go be able to record no matter what's going on this thing does does the trick it's impressive moving in a different direction and you know mac and you know mike mac and i <laughs> when all you can mac is that oh what's that commercial came in when all you can pizza about is yeah, yeah. yeah. when all you can sushi yeah. about yeah. when we can think about is mac um dan and i love mac but windows 11 did just come out last week now the news of that was a little overshadowed by the Facebook bombshell that came out on 60 Minutes. And then the, the one-two punch, was, which was the outage of Facebook and Instagram and what's all. Oh, here's something crazy. Did you know that this outage was so pervasive that they had to break through the doors of the building to get in to actually access the equipment? Because even the key cards... The that's access that's the right. building. They're, they're 25 kilohertz work. proximity cards. Those those <laughs> were even work. not working. They had to use axes to get into their own building to reboot the servers or whatever. Can, I mean, can you imagine these these you know these young millennial kids who run you know, Facebook going, gotta go in there. <laughs> OMG. I, I, I had the same <laughs> conspiracy theory that Leo Laporte did on Twitter, which was I thought it was Mark having a little tantrum saying, fine, you don't like Facebook? Well, let me show you what happens when you don't have Facebook, everybody. And then he flipped the switch Monday morning. Didn't bother anyway, me at all. It, it, the only, it, got, it got me because I was trying to WhatsApp my girlfriend who is still in Iran. She'll be back next weekend, thankfully. But um, I couldn't get a hold of her on WhatsApp. I was like, what's up? So what's up, I what's found up? out and it was the internet. So this news got overshadowed by far, but Windows 11 is out. Windows hasn't had a new version in a really long time since Windows 10. And it's sort of a, a kind of what I'm understanding, a little bit of a dumbing down. I might even call it, dare I say, a little bit Mac Untosh e version of Windows. It's got a not as much setting ability and flexibility. It's got a cleaner interface and it resembles a little bit more like the Mac OS. The dock is in the center and the bottom. Oh. It's kind of fascinating anyway, how similar it is. Now, should you run out and install it? No, of course not. <laughs> it just came out. Give them some time. There are going to be, in, it, invariably be some bugs. But not only that, it's different enough that you might miss a few features that maybe you're accustomed to having that may not be there right now in Windows 11. So 
be aware of that. But if you want to play it around with it and you're a bit of a computer geek, well, if you're a computer geek, you already aren't playing with it. Let's be fair. Let's face it. Um, so keep that in mind. It may not be ready for you in the voiceover world. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I teased talking about the Personas Revelator IO24. I have to say I did make use of it that whole week doing a, a London live appearance, a podcast interview, uh, several different productions, and it performed beautifully. It performed felt flawlessly. So, you know, I've, I've been, been hard on Personas because I never liked the audio box. I thought it was noisy, and I've had issues with various Persona stuff over the years, some mixers. Well, you know, this is a new piece of gear, obviously a whole new set of firmware, a lot of new things going on. And so far, it seems to be working beautifully. So if you want to give it a try, they're only about $200. I mean, give one a shot. I know how to configure it now. I know how to set up the mixer, the channel strip that it has on board. Yes, it has a channel strip, and it really does work. So I thought you guys should know that I've been having a good experience so far. Great. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of premium gear makers, let's lump Universal Audio into that one because their stuff, their audio interfaces started at $500 and went up, right? <laughs> They're kind of going down market and they are wanting to be competitive now with the Scarlets of the world, the Focusrite stuff. Um, so now they're doing that and they have the Volt line. And so Universal Audio Volt is their basic gear that doesn't require a complex con console. You don't have to understand how to do a lot of virtual sound drivers and simple USB. Yeah, I, I believe it's a native USB uh, com class compliant. You just plug it in and go. And uh, so it starts out with the Volt 1 at the very basic level and goes up to the Volt 176, which is taking the idea that they their, their legacy equipment, like the 610 mm -hmm. mic preamp yeah. and the 1176 compressor, putting the essences of them into the interface. And just having literally a single button to turn them on and turn them off. Hmm. So I'm seeing that more and more. Like the SSL has the 4K button. Right. The Focusrite Scarlet has the Air button. Now, again, will you say it? We'll say it again. We'll say it again. We'll say it again. If it sounds good, don't turn it on. Like if, <laughs> if, the, if you have a good mic and good speech diction and everything mm -hmm. sounds great, it's not going to help you. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to achieve something specific or do live casts or podcasts, those little bits of sweetening might be helpful, but it's something that's built in. Another company also going down market, I've noticed, is Arturia. You've probably not heard of them unless you've been really geeking out about this stuff. Their stuff was starting around six hundred. Now they're under. Now they're at the under two hundred dollar mark for an interface. So this is a trend I see, and I'm sure this has been motivated by the pandemic. I'm like sure. so many people are recording at home and need something far more simple to use. Absolutely. I don't think it's about quality. Hopefully the quality is where it was, but the simplicity, you know, no consoles to screw around with. One button, one knob does one thing. All right. But you have to know what it is that knob does. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I assume people know that the first input knob on the left is the mic gain. A lot of people don't know that. And, and it's a, it says gain on there. Well, what am I What does that mean? <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. You got to start somewhere. Absolutely. Let's talk acoustics. Let's talk acoustics because let's face it. I think it's, you know, there's a lot of things that people who are starting out don't understand. Mm. And perhaps they don't understand it because they don't know what it is they're listening for. And it's hard to conceptualize maybe. Absolutely. And the thing is, is I, I, you know, you and I get a lot of audio from people and they're like, how does it sound? It's a, it sounds like you're in an untreated room. It or, sounds like you're using the wrong microphone to record the right. one in your laptop. Yeah. Or <laughs> yes. Or perhaps sounds like this, it sounds like this. Why does it sound like that? Because you're talking into the, the back and the wrong microphone. side. Boy, how many times do I get that? One? See, if that's not a reason to start with a shotgun, like, I don't know what it is. If you don't <laughs> yeah. know which end of this mic you're talking, it's going to help you. It's, 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 <laughs> it's going to help you. But, uh, you know, so I talk to people about acoustics because yeah. to me, you know, we always talk about how, what, what are the, my three keys to good audio? One is the acoustics of the room you recorded, right. keeping noise out because it's part A and part B, keeping noise out and preventing sound from jumping around all over the room and coming back to your mic. Ricocheting. You know, I think I actually used the word slap back with somebody yesterday and they're like, what does that mean? 
And it's like, well, it's slapback is something you will get in a smaller booth because it doesn't take long for sound to bounce back to the microphone. So you, if it's, if it's, you know, and we can measure it, we, we used to do a thing. We'd, we do a clap and then we would measure the nanoseconds between the clap mm-hmm. and when it would dissipate. Mm-hmm. You know? In a bigger room, it sounds like a reverb. It right. kind of goes Ch-. in a small box. It just has this weird phasey right. nasal hollow tunnel sound. Right. Exactly. So one of the things that we like to do is make sure that people's rooms sound right. If your room sounds right. Yeah. That solves so many problems. You know, one, you've got to have a quiet room. And most people don't know that they don't have a quiet room because they don't, their brain has out processed all the noises from their house and their apartment right. and stuff like that. And we hear it, we see it. I mean, you, we look at it on a spectrum. Oh, look, there's, you know, there's a lot of rumble below 80 hertz, well, a lot of rumble at 125 hertz. You know, what's going on? Is your is the furnace on? You know, are you running a, a ceiling fan? You know, do you have your, your, your microphone, you know, placed on top of your computer? You know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, but you've got to have a very quiet room to start with. And you don't know it because your brain tunes out the consistent sounds that are in there. But this guy didn't have a brain. And he hears everything. Or she hears everything. Or it hears everything. All right, we'll go gender neutral on the mics. They uh, hear everything. Yeah, they, they hear everything. And the better the mic, the more it hears. So why people are like, I've got to have the best mic. Well, do you have the best room to use that mic? Yeah. Or as I like to say, if you get a Ferrari, you really have to have a good garage for it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's not the equipment. It's how you use it. And one of the most important things to use is a proper acoustical environment. And that usually requires a set of meta ears. Somebody who third, is a third party and objective set of ears. Somebody who is yeah. not used to being in your house or in your apartment right. or in your booth. And we'll go, I can hear this. I can hear that. I have, a, I had a lot of clients this week who were referred to me by somebody because that person perceived problems that the other person did not. And this is stuff like on their website that, you know, in their demos, it's mm-hmm. like, well, it sounds this, it sounds tinny. It sounds that send it to me. Yes. Okay. Here's why. And you know, people are always like, well, if I just, if I throw enough foam on the wall, that'll soundproof it. Uh, no. Foam is not soundproof. soundproofing. It stuff is as transparent as tissue paper. Uh, sound goes right through it, but it won't bounce back. Yeah. It re- reduces the reflection. Another thing I've been noticed, just thinking about conceptually, we, the, you know the term computational photography? Have you heard this buzzword? Okay. You pick out your <laughs> iPhone, you hit the picture button, and yeah. the picture looks usually pretty good, right? Yeah, right. It's exposed correctly. Right. The color is pretty accurate, right. et cetera. You know, that even notice how we still don't have a microphone equivalent of that, that we can really rely on for professional use? Right. Like in the world of audio, we are still working like professional photographers have forever, which is got to have proper lighting, got to know how to use the camera, got to know how to focus it, got to know what um, ISO to use, et cetera, that the gain, right. right? All those things are still part and parcel to having a professional personal studio. You right. still, there's no microphone equivalent to an iPhone camera. You know, we don't, it's, that may come later. Well, there's the Apogee hype has that this, sort of. They're getting there's more and more AI or whatever right. you want to call it in right. the microphone. But still, we are using gear that's based on 80 to 90 year old technology. Right. And you still have to have a good room. And acoustics is where that's gonna happen. It's gotta be done right. Right. So send in your audio so we can hear it, so we can say that either sounds great or it's it's a little too reflective. Or it's too dead. We get rooms that are way too dead. It happens, and, yeah. And uh, they, they end up sounding sometimes muddy. Yeah. Or they'll be really dead in like the mid range, but not at the low end. So they're kind of woofy and boomy, you know. Right. So you got to control the whole sound spectrum, not just the middle or the top. Right. And it depends on the size of the room you're in. Right. You know. I, you know. I. 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 I was able to give somebody some room dividers this week. She's got a very small apartment. Like uh, what kind of room? Like the folding for room privacy room. screens? Yeah, yeah, oh, privacy yeah, yeah, screen, yeah. Which are great because 
You can throw a couple of moving blankets on that, clip yeah. them on, and you talk to that, not to the back wall, right? And out to the room, so the microphone is facing the quiet you, part, the quiet part of the room. Yeah, away from uh, the th room. There's a really good tip right there, kids. So uh, <laughs> you know, and that and that will give you the the non reflection you know thing. But you've got to have a quiet room, and that usually takes a third party to determine whether it's quiet or not. And if it's not. What is, what is it that's being heard so we can deal with it? So you can turn it off. It's my neighbor's air conditioner. That's what rocks are for. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to explain more about the rocks later. Yeah, no. I, uh, there was the one guy who called me. He says, you know, what do I do about all the birds outside my window? Uh -oh. That's what shotguns are for. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, I'm not. I am not advocating violence against birds. No, no. But it was a great joke, and I thought it was one of the wittiest things I'd said all week. Anyway, we got lots of questions to deal with, and we will get to those questions right after these important messages. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. <laughs> just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. It's you. Is this my turn? It's your to turn talk about to talk source, source elements and source, oh. source connect. We could do a commercial together then. We could. Because we have one camera. Um, <laughs> source elements. This is an amazing company. I mean, of course, it's not, not even supporting us, which is one reason. But uh, they've been producing tools to remotely collaborate long before the pandemic to allow studios to record voice actors around the world and basically make it feel to the production and sometimes more importantly, really, to the client, like actually everybody's in the same place at the same time. And one thing that they do that is unique is they record or buffer your audio, the talent's audio on the talent's computer, but completely behind the scenes. It's called the cue manager. Now, what blows my mind is so many productions haven't made use of this. I'm hearing of it being used more now. It's been around for years, but the thing that's amazing is it will replace dropouts in the audio amazing. for the production. Yeah, in Pro Tools. So um, it's, it's a really cool thing. Not only that, but it can also replace the audio. Let's say at the end of the, at the, end of the session, the producer's like, I want the full quality audio, not that AAC stuff, which still sounds fine, trust me. Uh, that's fine. Uh, what the cue manager will do is then send over the wave copy of the audio, the completely uncompressed that's been copied, and send that in the background, almost like FTP. Remember FTP? 
Um, Can we still use FTP? They just call it a Dropbox. Yeah, Dropbox, <laughs> any of these file we transfer, it's doing it all behind the scenes. It's like magic. And it's really cool. And it's just part of the service. It's built in. So if you want to give it a try, head over and get a 15-day trial at source-elements.com. I really recommend you start a subscription so you can get the full experience of their their uh, support. That's really where you're going to feel how how great this company is to work with. They will help you with the whole process of getting it troubleshooted, tuned, and get you up to running, uh, up, up to speed. Well, let's get to those questions. we got a lot waiting for us. We'll be right, right back in a second. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. We are. And we sorry, we're not. You we're we're, <laughs> we're flying without a, an audio cue tonight, <laughs> so we're still learning. Um, we got questions. We've got our mailbag. First one, and the audience questions, our very own Jeff Holman. Jeff Holman. He's a smart guy. He's <laughs> doing the questions, so he can throw it in the top. He says regarding the Personas Revelator IO twenty four that you used in the Vanguard review. Yeah, that's right. I did a review for the Vanguard V4, Mike. I, I mentioned that, but you can go find it. And you did it on the Revelator. That's right. I used it <laughs> on the Revelator. So if you want to see that, go to George the Tech YouTube. Um, did you figure out why it was higher in one channel when you turned off? You're very, you're a very, you really pay a lot of attention, Jeff. You really, <laughs> really pay attention to details. Did you figure out why there was a little bit higher level in the left channel when I turned off the processing? No, I did not, actually. I, I have I've been using it so much and I have the processing on. I just, I haven't troubleshooted it yet, but Jeff, that is on my, I need to do that. Obviously I will open a ticket with personas. Maybe it's a firmware thing. I, I have to think it is. Um, would you recommend it for VO actors who don't stream or podcast, but may live close to Van Nuys <laughs> airport? Anybody, you know, Jeff. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you can set a high pass filter <laughs> precisely. You can get exactly the frequency you want. And it's just, dialed in permanently um so i think that's really really helpful if you let's say have like a neighbor's air conditioner or pool pump that's humming at 120 hertz you can make a very cleverly set eq uh, to try to scoop that out so yeah I, I would recommend it for that i think so um and he says it seems like an inexpensive inexpensive version of an apollo or a roadcaster yes totally true I think it fulfills pretty much everything an actor could possibly need without the extern without the extra cost and the extra complexity and features that the Roadcaster and the Apollo have. It's it's like those two made a made a new product without the extraneous stuff and boiled it down to what you need. And I, I I'm really I'm really impressed. So yeah. anyway, I think I've said enough about that. Cool. Grace Newton asks. I am finally ready to take the leap from PC to Mac. Hey! Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Apple's, uh, Apple's <laughs> check is in the mail. Yes. <laughs> George, George, you recommended a laptop to me a few weeks back, but you've mentioned they were, we are all still working out some, they're, they're still working out some kinks with the M1 yeah. chip. What's the latest on the Mac laptop? There it well, is right there. Uh, <laughs> I do use a, my <laughs> MacBook Air m1 uh, with a cute little cover very nicely back. decorated um, this is really my girlfriend's computer <laughs> i need to buy another one soon because <laughs> i have co-opted it um i am a massive fan of it this computer has been nearly flawlessly flawless the only idiosyncrasy of it is if i sleep it for a while and then open it up after maybe a day or two it's a little bit like <sighs> okay hold on a second oh it has to rub its eyes and it's real slow and weird and and then it and then it's like okay must have That's, tubes in it or something it's really weird i don't know why it does it it happens sometimes i'll just quit chrome and safari start them again that's the only funky thing about it otherwise it has been a great great experience now i also have the m1 mac mini dan has as well and yeah we've had some issues but most of those issues were software related, not, you know, things not being supported quite yet. I had an issue with a USB hub, which I pulled out of my system and now everything's great. So it's, it's growing pains of new technology, but we are now at a full year since those were launched yeah. and um, they're very mature. Now they're releasing the next generation any day, probably in the next couple of weeks. 
Um, and so I don't think there's any reason to hesitate at this point. All the software manufacturers, hardware gear, hardware stuff that we would all probably use mostly is supported. As always, if you're really worried, talk to one of us. Have a little session. We'll review everything you're using, what hardware, software, and make sure that you're not going to have any um, frustration going to the new system. Yeah. But uh, yeah. and, uh, fanless, it doesn't make any... It's quiet. Listen, how does it do that? It doesn't make any sound. There's yeah. no fan in here. Yeah. No, I, I like I like the M1 that I, you know, the Mac Mini, because it's always... I don't think I've turned it off. I mean, No drama. No, yeah, it's no drama. Quiet. It, it's quiet. It works. But like any Mac, you plug it in and it works. When, you know, PCs are just, you know, are they getting better? I think there will always be PCs. I mean, Microsoft just came out with some new computers that are compelling. Mm -hmm. They have a the Surface Book Studio where the screen can like pivot outward mm -hmm. and like be like an easel. You know, <laughs> it's very clever. It'll it'll fold flat and turn it into a tab. You know, has some party tricks. But that's not what you get a laptop for. <laughs> no, I guess if you're doing a lot of presentations or something, maybe that's why. I don't right. know. Anyway, we are kind of biased, of course, um, but we've had a very good, but very for good, good experience. Reasons. Yeah, we like yeah. our Macs. Um, Linda, also, yes, Linda Joyce Miner. Yes. That's a question off of YouTube. We're glad you guys are watching on YouTube. Um, I know it's not the mic that makes the voice, but I have been told how many times have we heard that phrase i have been told uh i need a mic for a female voice seriously help every time i see the i heard from or i was told that or i overheard somebody nobody ever has any more detail like who right. was who this was person? this how are they qualified <laughs> to give you this information what are they exactly talking so all I can imagine is that they think that the mic that you have maybe picks up too much of something they don't like to hear. Maybe it's sibilance. Maybe. That's probably that's probably the, you know, it's almost sexist to say it, but women tend to have a little bit more sibilance than men. Or they do have the sibilance, they both have sibilance, but it might be in a higher frequency. Higher, yeah. You know? Is. So maybe that's what they're hearing and they're saying you need a mic that has less of that, but they're doing a lousy job of explaining this advice. Yeah. I think that's, and that's the key to when you crowdsource your home studio Yeah, is that people are, people are happy to give their advice. I mean, you go on Facebook and somebody says a question and 72 comments later. And, and that's when you and I will come in and there and go, what on earth is going on in here? And people are just throwing out stuff. Oh, this is the best one I've used. This is the best one. Every voice is different. Every room is different. And there isn't an engineer out there that can tell what microphone you use. No, and there's also not a lot of coaches or agents that also know what they're talking All about right. when it comes to giving the correct advice. They know what they've been told works well, or they know what their top selling voice talent in their roster might be using. Yeah. And but, it doesn't mean anything about what you're doing. But why is it that that's good? And right. how do you use It's not the stuff, it's how you use it. You can take a yeah. great mic and it'll make you sound like crap if you sound like crap yeah. you know, if you're in you know the hall of mirrors at versailles take that uh, advice with a grain of salt and yeah. bring that advice to one of us to to really dig into it and find out what what's really going on absolutely <laughs> jay horace black shall i get that one sure uh hey hey great to see everyone healthy and well thank you we are mm. doing pretty We're doing well great. tech talk number 65 yeah. um Recently, I ordered the Biodynamic DT770 or 770, 770, 80 ohm headphones. Um, and that's what I happen to use at home. That's my daily drivers. After a few days, I sent them back as I like the Harlan Hogan cans much better. Oh, well, that's good. Um, I find them lighter, a, a night and day difference to my ears. Have you found this to be true when using the two? Or should I have given the TT770 Pros more time to burn in? Um, um, I don't think the DT seventies need a bunch of burn in time, by the way, what is burn in time? That means that's time that you have your, it's the iPad doing that. Um, that's the time that the device needs to like earphones. They say sometimes need this. They need to be exercised for a while. They have a loud to, blast to let them yeah, loose. They need to yeah. flap around for a while until they become loosened. And, um, I don't know if that's true, but I've, I've, I've known plenty of people that got the seven seventies and thought they were too 
something right. too bassy or too dark, not as bright, whatever it is, they're not for everybody. And I don't think they're really great for voice actors. They're great for producers and listening for monitoring and mixing. But when you wear those while you're voice acting, I think they're too, they're just, I don't know what it is. They, they're too muffled sounding, yeah. you know? So I can see why you might like those. I'm wearing them right now, actually. I'm reminding myself what these sound like. And the signature of these is very nice. They're yeah. not overly bright. No. They're the, comfortable. It's a flat response. Yeah, they're pretty flat. I mean, everybody tries to do what they call flat. They're all a little bit different, but these, to me, have a nice, pleasing tonal characteristic. To me, they're similar to the Audio Technica headphones that I also love and I've been using forever. Mine are laying around here somewhere, um, but I, uh, they, they are really quite nice. So yeah. they, you have to use those headphones, whatever they're going to be, um, sometimes for a while to really know if you'll like them or not. But when you put them on and you like them immediately... I guess Harlan did something right. Yeah, well, I, he put a lot of research into them. I mean, those are... And really, these are not the first generation either. No, no. This is after a total revision and right, revamp. Right. Know. I mean, we're running the spot today for, for his headphones, and they're, they're, they're really good. I mean, when I need headphones, that's what I wear. When I'm doing a remote session, that's what I wear. Generally, I, I listen on studio monitors when I'm editing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if... You know, I need to, you know, when we're doing, uh, you know, we're doing this show, sometimes I've yeah. got to do that. I've got to listen on, on headphones. Those are the ones I want. I'm trying to, to do that more at home. Yeah. I don't have a, a listening environment per se for monitoring, but I do have some really great studio monitors and I'm, I'm listening to them more and more and getting more into that. All righty. So. Patricia Andrea, how you doing? Uh, question. So I have too many closets in a, in a bedroom. Too many closets. Why would someone put too many closets in a bedroom? Well, if it's a master bedroom, one guy, the, the guy gets. I'm guessing it's an older house. It's Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Do you recommend I make one of those closets furthest from the window a whisper type room? Well, you can go and you can whisper in there all you want or forget about it and just treat the whole room acoustically. This is a room I will dedicate fully for voiceover. Uh -huh. so How the, big is the room? Should I be in a bedroom or a full size room or should I shove myself into a closet? Question. Right. I would, I would always err on the bigger room because you have a little bit more control. Uh, you can reduce the acoustical size of a room mm -hmm. by putting up a room divider. That's right. And but you can't make a small room sound like a much bigger, bigger one. room. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 as long as you train it right and don't talk out into, you know, into where it's going to reflect back a lot, uh, a bigger room is, I, I know you prefer a bigger room. I totally it's yeah. the, 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 what's the so so obviously why don't we always do why are we using closets anyway people go into closets because it's the only way they can get away from noise yeah, they, they do kids. that as yeah another <laughs> barricade to noise that is to me literally the only reason to go into a closet and right. record voiceover yeah. there's no other acoustical reason to ever want to be in a small box so right, right. Um, but a, a walk-in yeah. closet full of clothes kicks butt yeah walk every closet, time something pretty decent size yeah sounds much better absolutely yeah, yeah. can you imagine if you were to get a well studio bricks for example <laughs> that was like four by six feet now imagine taking taking two walls of the booth and hanging clothing on it <laughs> you know like clothing racks nice now imagine the remaining space inside <sighs> where you're standing that's a walk-in closet. <laughs> it sounds incredible. Yeah, but you would just never do that in the real world. It would be it would be ridiculous. Well, I've I've done it plenty of times with people. You know, and, and have you had people? Did you have you had them hang clothes in their whisper rooms? No. Have you done that? No. Okay. That's that's the next. Well, one. no. I mean, yeah. Sometimes they do. I mean, they might. You have a good, nice big down jacket or something like that. You can. Hang that's true. There. I mean, that's not a bad way to do that. Yeah. But yeah. you know, but a walk-in closet just rocks. And there's many times that I've, you know, I've, I'm like. Do you have a walk-in closet? Oh, yeah. Is it full of clothes? Yeah. Great. I just saved you $6,000. Know, or more. Or, or more. <laughs> yeah, depending on, on, on what you get. Uh, Rob Ryder. All right. He says, I've watched you both for some time. Yes, you have. He is a fan. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> you're, you're the man. Um, with all the advantages of a shotgun mic, why, Dan, do you use a large diaphragm condenser? I'm assuming you're thinking about what you're seeing right now us do on the show. Yeah. This is my microphone <laughs> that's in my booth. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I use different mics 
for different things, but when I'm doing something specifically for a client, I'm either I'm either at my desk, I'm getting real lazy, but the acoustics in here are so good. We I, have this room dialed. Yeah, this this like room. Dan can sit out here or in his ISO booth. He's got the best of both worlds right. with this. Setup. Yeah. So, you know, at my desk, I've got a custom made uh, large diaphragm mic. In my booth, I've got the 416. On sometimes I drag the 416 out here. Uh, like when we do voiceover body shop and I want George to sound his best and not talking like he's on the radio on, on his, on his road when road. I'm at home, my mic's like right here. Yeah. In mobile. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I was in radio, I'd still be doing that. But voiceover is different. We don't talk half an inch from somebody's eardrum. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, so I like the large diaphragm condensers for the reasons that they're very sensitive. They pick up, you know, the subtleties of my voice and I've got a room that I can use one. In. Yeah. Plus when we do the show, we like to show both mics and we like to show our sponsors mic too. So exactly. there's a couple things going right. on there. And, and do we sound different on these? You can hear us bit. both clearly. Yeah. Mic technique is a little harder for Dan because it, we don't want it in the camera, like too much in the, in the frame, you right. know? So that's, what, you know, and I think I'm, you might notice I'm always a little bit tweaking my mic placement because we want to face each other, but we don't want our mics to pick each other up at the same right. time. And so it's Correct. a challenge using two condenser mics right next to each yeah. other, but that's why we do it. We like a challenge. Yeah. Last question, maybe, uh, from Dave Rosa, which digital audio workstation do you prefer? Well, I'm an Adobe audition guy. We that's had your, a great that's webinar your primary last week. One now. Yeah. yeah, we mm -hmm. had a great webinar last week uh, teaching people how to use Adobe Audition. Uh, it to me, it's the only software that's really designed for voiceover, uh, along with Twisted Wave, which is of course a lot less complex and easy to use. Uh, Twisted Wave is like simple Adobe Audition. <laughs> Maybe you could say that. Yeah, well, it doesn't. Kinda. Yeah, it doesn't have the bells and whistles that right. Audition has. The thing about a digital audio workstation is. It's not, they don't sound inherently different when you record raw. It's going to pick up the same sounds from your studio as anywhere as, as anything else. It's what you can do to manipulate it afterwards that makes software, you know, different from each other. You know, Pro Tools is for, you know, for making 80 tracks of a, of a you know, a rap album uh, or doing music tracks or, or tracks for a movie or something like that, where you've mm -hmm. got to do a, a lot of mixing. As voice actors, we're giving people single track, mono, properly modulated files, and that's it. So what do you need all this other stuff for? Well, I got to sound great. Well, we don't talk to people through processing, you know, processing, you know, and, and George will, will he'll show you all this and do stacks for you that are just minor little corrections to the room, perhaps. Um, you know, a lot of people are relying on you know, noise reduction stuff. The noise reduction stuff is getting better, but it was never designed for voiceover. And if you don't use it right, you'll see why it's not good for voiceover. You can overcook it so yeah. bad and yeah. then it sounds way worse. Yeah. So, uh, I, I prefer, I prefer the, uh, Adobe audition. I so do use twisted wave, but you know, but I, you know, we teach people audacity cause it's free. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody uses audacity, you know, yeah. but you could step up to something like Adobe audition. Once you understand the concept behind it as a, you know, a general single track and multi-track recording software and the fact that it is so easy to use, it's like using Photoshop for audio. I, I definitely, I, there's two, you can either get a demo of it and try it for 30 days for free, or you can take a class and watch a webinar. I have a, I've got the beginner one and a more advanced one on our, on George the Tech website, and and then get a primer on like what you're what you're getting into right. before you make a leap from Audacity. Because the thing that most people move from is Audacity, right? You know, that's most people are going to probably start with Audacity, unless they're one of my clients and they're on a Mac. Then they're going to be starting on Twisted Wave. So it just depends. Now he said his other part was asking about the Harlan Hogan mic. We talked a little about it a little bit. Yeah, um, the VO1A. I, it's, what is there to say? Well, how do I sound on it? Do I sound like crap on it? No, I sound like me, which is the idea. The idea of a, of a home voiceover studio is not to sound great. It's to sound like you. 
I'm going to swing this. I'm getting a little double, like I can hear you on this. So let's swing it over so, here. Okay, so that, now you're hearing me, you know, the way you're supposed to approach this mic and the way, the way it sounds. It's been designed by Harlan to sound a certain way, but I have found it works great on anyone's voice. Fine on women's voices. I've never heard it be sibilant. Uh, if you use it properly, get the right height and your copies down here and you're talking, you know, depending on the size of the room, either, you know, now I've got it down to Mahalo fist or partial Mahalo or thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, and, 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 and you have to find the sweet spot on the mic for your particular voice. And now, uh, I mean, what's great about this room is you really can be a decent distance away. I mean, oh, you yeah. can, you can be a foot away because we have a high ceiling room with really great acoustics. Right. And the better your acoustics and the higher the ceiling, the more wiggle room you have on, you can be a lot farther. It's so awesome not having to be a fist width away, <laughs> which is what I make a lot of people do when they're in their little closets. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's so much more flexibility. Yeah. But it's a, um, as soon as I pull this mic away and I get to hear you with that, without, without that. Yeah. It's like, it's oh, a, oh yeah. 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 It's a, it's a great little mic. It is. It know? is. And so, as, and the fact is, is it's a great mic at a great price point. Yeah. So you can get, you can get a good super professional sound, which is just you. Uh, if you're a, have a good professional sound yourself, this thing will capture you as you exist, which is the way Harlan designed it. So that's the idea. So he gets two spots tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's been with us since day one. He has the ugly early days of Ewabs. Right. <laughs> and he's stuck with us for some reason. <laughs> anyway. Right. All righty. Well, uh, Thanks for all the questions. We yeah. love it. This is why we do what we do and why we keep showing up every week. You know, otherwise life would be pretty dull. Uh, so say, you know, and you can still send in your questions. If you write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. And if you got a question, send it in. We will use it on our show. So anyway, so that's uh, tech talk, but uh, we still got a little bit to cover in just a minute. So don't go away. We'll be right back after these important messages. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough, and the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash Start. Again, that's voheroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate, transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch. Or else. Well, we're back. 
this is just too much fun. You know, it's our, it's our bi-monthly poker game. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. Without the beer and the cigars, I suppose. <laughs> Something that neither of us would probably be using. We've had a little bit too much drinking on the show in the past sometimes. Yeah, that's never. Mainly had idea. to do with certain guests whose that's names true. will not be mentioned right now. That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, next week on this show, we have another fabulous interview with another fabulous voiceover personality. Uh, I got a couple of people in mind and they're, we, I'm waiting for them to get It's back the busy to season. It is. It's, it, People you know, are pretty busy right yeah. now. It, you know, the, the Christmas commercials are being done now. and The, the, commis- the Christmas commercials are being aired right now. That, that's they are, true. They, the tech industry is telling everybody to go Christmas shopping oh, great. now. Yeah. Oh, who, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, who are our donors this week? Oh, yes. Shall we tag team the names again? Like sure, the sure, sure, sure. Start? Uh, Jill Goldman. Rob Ryder. Patty Gibbons. Antland Productions. Michelle Blanker. Christopher Epperson. Uh, Sandra Manwiller. Philip Sapir. Trey Mosley. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. Stephen Chandler. Robert Leadham. Michael Kearns and Graham, Graham Spicer. Spicer. I was doing my best, like, uh, award show announcer name <laughs> style. Did I nail it? <laughs> You're learning. You're hanging around with enough voice actors. You're starting to pick it up. You know, ten just, years you've been I'm doing. I'm just this. imitating. I'm not. I don't, I'm not doing it. So you, people should watch episodes one and five of <laughs> Ewabs and to see how you've improved. Not to mention gotten a lot smaller. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Again, if you need help with your home studio and you want to work with George, you go to George the dot tech and to work with Dan, you go to home voiceover studio.com. Looking forward to your call. Anyway, uh, thanks to our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, Neo heroes.com voice actor websites.com and JMC demos. demos. Uh, thanks for Jeff Holman getting those questions in and being sharp as a tack thanks, Jeff. while pursuing his amazing acting career. Can't wait to see the stuff he's in. I know. He's going to have to show Jeff. it to us. Uh, and uh, Sue Merlino for doing it remotely. Hi, Sue. Uh, and, uh, and, and Lee Penny <laughs> Lee simply Penny. for being Lee Penny. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Well, he come visit Lee us for Penny. crying out loud. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, getting your audio right. If you don't really know what you don't know, it's time to talk to somebody who actually does. And that would be us two. It's time to take charge of your voice acting. Oh, very good. (laughs) Anyway, the thing is, if we hear it and it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. Tech talk. Tech talk. Tech talk. See you next week.